It's Monday. I've got mail. Got coffee. Let's do a mailbag Monday. Let's start with this one. Strap holder, it says. Oh, okay. Um, this is some screw down holders for tie wraps or other branded zip ties. I just always call them tie wraps because that's the brand I encountered first and I just that's like the Kleenex of tie wrap of uh, zip ties. Anyway, um, you screw these onto a wall or a beam or whatever and um, do I have any around here? Hang on. Okay, so uh, when you're running a bunch of wire in, in a bundle, for instance, under your model railroad, um, you can line these guys up, um, screw them on to the benchwork underneath, take your bundle of wires, and do, 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 run that through there, and there you go, you have one bundle of wires firmly attached and screwed down. Um, if you need to add more wires later, you just come along and cut one or two ties, lay the wire in, redo those ties, carry on down the line, cut a couple more, lay the wire in. Makes for a nice, neat, tidy wiring solution. And not that expensive either. Let's go take a look. Okay, here we go. Plastic saddle, cable zip tie, screw mount base, 5mm width, 100 pieces from Lucky.Warm. I paid two dollars and eighty-four cents plus buck twenty-seven shipping. Uh, so that's what three, four bucks for a hundred. So what's that? Four cents each. Yeah, those are a consumable item. All right, next in it says electric iron USB, and then Chinese characters. Hmm. Oh hey, it's one of those cool little USB soldering irons. I've seen a few different people talking about these guys on YouTube. This of course would be the cheapest one I could find because that's just how I do things. You know that, you've been watching long enough. So, the USB cable that comes with it is 32 inches plus another 14, 32, 42, 46 inches long. Okay. That's comfortable. Uh, where is my USB meter here? Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to plug this into the USB power bar off to the side here, which you may remember from other videos such as USB power bar. And what else am I going to need to see if this thing works? A bit of solder, probably. Um, should I get something to solder? Oh, just see if it melts it, first of all. So, plug it in and push the button. There's no indication that anything's happening. Pushing and holding the button. There's no indication that anything's happening. Does it have an LED? There's no instructions came with this thing whatsoever. It says, okay, on the back of it, it says that it is a five, come on, focus, five volts and eight watts. USB soldering iron. That's all it says. Okay, so uh, that's obviously not working off my USB power thing there. Let's try a battery. Why don't we just do that? Let's try this battery that I've put together a while ago. Okay, so as you can see there's no current happening and when I push the button there continues to be no current happening. So what's going on inside this little guy? Oh. 
nothing happens. Okay. That's disappointing. Step one. Is any voltage actually getting through this chintzy little cable? Yes. Okay. That's not the problem. The problem is in here. Uh, how far do I want to go during a mailbag video on new 5 volt 8 watt mini portable USB powered electric powered soldering iron pen tip touch random letters from Ying Gang Bai. Uh, well, I got this at auction for 579 Canadian for 50 American. Uh, what else? Is there other ones down here? No, there aren't others similar listed. Okay. What does it say? 2015 hot sale. Ooh, hot sale. Right. If it was a 2015 model, I bought it in 2018 at auction on eBay. Right. Brand new high quality. Not convinced about the high quality part. Uh, compact, fully functioning, not fully functioning, USB soldering iron is perfect for hobbyists. Rapid heat up and cooling, blah, 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 small tip. Uh, protective cap, yes, it has that. Uh, claims to heat in 15 seconds and cool down in 30 seconds. LED indicator. Um, anyway, that's enough about that. Well, after that disappointment, let's see if a big bag will make me happy here. It says one times the lights, something this size. I'm going to guess that maybe some LEDs. It is, in fact, it looks very much like a strip of LEDs. Yes, these are. Okay, uh... Doesn't really say on there. Claims to be three M adhesive on the back. Uh, says it's 12 volts. It has three LEDs and a resistor in each segment. So let's get, get some volts into it and let's see what it does. Okay, so there we go. Ah, there it is. These are either bright white or cool white. Uh, I can't really tell from the package. I'll have to take a look. But that's well, they are nice and bright at oh, it's current limiting at one amp. Okay. Uh Let's just see what it takes to make it not current limit. 1.7 amps, wow, at 12 volts. Okay, so that's probably a five meter spool for that kind of, uh, that kind of current. Let's uh, take a look at the listing and find out what it really is. Five meters white slash warm white. 5630 SMD, non-waterproof, 300 LED, strip lights, 12 volts. Uh, I chose the white as opposed to the warm white. And these cost me $6.58 Canadian, which I happened to buy on sale for 44% off. Yay me, I'm cheap. Um, what else is there to say about them down here? Uh, pure white, 6,6500 Kelvin which looks like the ones I got, uh, 3,000 lumens for the 5 meter roll, and yeah, weight 80 grams, viewing angle 120 degrees, there we go, oh, CRI greater than 80, for those who think that matters, these ones, I, uh, I ordered for installing under the kitchen cabinets to light up the counter, my wife will be happy that these have showed up. Now I just have to wait for the uh, couple other things I ordered to go with it. 
Five pieces, 433 megahertz RF trans mod. Ooh, that sounds promising. Ow, pin sticking through the plastic. Uh, that's more than five pieces. Oh, right, there's a transmitter and receiver. So five pairs, right? Yes, okay. So these things, there's a few different ways that you can do RF to get between a couple of Arduino Wii modules. These things are the cheapest way. The other, the other common way, if I can find them quickly, The other common way is NRF 24L01, which we've got a few here as well. Um, but these ones, so the NRF modules are bidirectional. You can transmit and receive with the same module. These ones are unidirectional. You have a transmitter and a receiver. So they're good for remote control type applications where you don't care what the device being remote controlled has to say. You just tell it what to do and then carry on with your uh, with your day, basically. Um, so I'm going to be playing with these at some point in the future. I think I've got one other RF type module coming, so I'll probably or do I? I don't know. I'll I'll think about that when it's time to do that video. Um, but I'll probably sit down and just do a, a quick comparison of them um, for type of applications that I might want to do. Meanwhile, let's go and check the listing for these guys. Five pieces, 433 megahertz RF transmitter and receiver link kit for Arduino ARM MCU WL new. From Love Cell 2013, the five pairs was $3.70, which is stupidly cheap for what they do. Uh, does it say much down here? Uh, product number operating. So they're 5 volts. Uh, they work on 433.92 megahertz, which is an unlicensed band in most of the world. Uh, the receiver sensitivity down to neg 105 dBm or dB. Should be should say dBm, hopefully, because dB alone is a meaningless term. Um, which means it can the receivers can pick up uh, signal fairly far down into the mud, that's good. Um, you can put an external antenna onto it. Uh, 20 to 200 meters. So the transmitter can run on 3.5 to 12 volts, it says. Um, and application remote controls, blah blah blah, yeah. Somehow I screwed up. You'd think after doing these things for as long as I have been, that I would figure out what I'm doing. Anyway, I didn't have the camera op on when I opened this, and these are more tie wrap uh, zip tie saddles. These type are self adhesive though, or adhesive backed. Um, you know, peel the back thing and stick them onto something. Now we use these at work a little bit, but only when we can't use the screw down ones. Um, these ones do have little screw holes that you could use, I suppose, with really small screws, but typically not. Typically they're just stuck onto things that you can't drive a wood screw into, um, like metal or, or concrete sometimes, but usually metal. And you can put a tie through either that way or that way. Um, if you're using the screws, obviously you'd run it through that way. But they do the same thing, but the, the sh little sticky pad on there doesn't hold on the hot case of something very well. Um, like a piece of equipment that generates heat. It holds okay for a while, but it does tend to let go. Um, a little trick though that an old installer showed me is put a dot of crazy glue on the back of it before you stick it down and that sucker ain't falling off, which is mostly true. It also doesn't hold quite as much pulling force this way. Um, because it's just adhesive, but they're cheap and they do have their application. 50 pieces fixing plate self-adhesive plastic wire tie cable mount clip clamp from Weop uh, 
for the grand sum of buck seventy Canadian dollar thirty two American free shipping of course and there is a picture of them in action and there we go the contents of yet another Monday mailbag that's disappointing that it doesn't work out of the box I'll have to do some work on that um, LEDs will make my wife happy these uh, zip tie tie wrap saddle things are going to come in handy for actually installing these and the RF modules well something to play with in the future thanks for watching as usual if you got anything to say about any of this stuff or any mistakes that I obviously made talk to me down there in the description um, and as usual thanks again to my patreon supporters for helping me buy this stuff which I open in the mail bags and use for projects later which you're going to see on YouTube I will talk to you later